Welcome to Right On with John Crane. And today I'm in the shop and I got rummaging through uh, an old box of ax heads that I got. And what I wanna do is I wanna uh, restore one of these and uh, take an old ax head, uh, put a handle on it. And uh, so I pulled out a few candidates and these are uh, all double bit axes. And I think what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna take one of these, I think uh, this one specifically here, and I'm gonna polish it up to a mirror finish. And uh, it's kind of a nice fancy thing to do to an ax, you know, polish it up. It's almost reminiscent of, uh, you know, an ax that a firefighter might use. Sometimes you see those that are all polished up to like a mirror shine. But I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn this into a, a three-part series on uh, restoring this ax. And I think the first part will be is that I'm gonna take this double bit ax here I'm going to polish it all up, clean it up, uh, sharpen it. And then in the second video, second part of the series, I'm going to put a handle on it and uh, show how to make a handle out of a piece of hickory and uh, how to cut that handle out and how to put it on the axe, how to hang, hang the axe on the handle. And then in the third part of the series, uh, I'm going to show how to make a, a leather sheath for the axe and I'll go through the all the steps in the process of how I make like to make a sheath for this so but today first thing off uh, today's video is going to be uh, taking this and polishing it to a nice sheen and um, just a note on that uh, I really do like uh, the rustic look of axes and you know when an axe gets a nice patina on it and uh, you can see the wear and tear of it. It kind of tells the story of the axe's life and all the work that it's done. And something about that I just really appreciate. Uh, and so a lot of axes, I just like to put them on a handle and keep them as they are. You know, sharpen them up, tune them up, put a nice handle on it, put a nice sheath on it. <clears throat> but at the same time, uh, retain the, the story of, the, of that axe's life. And, uh, and some of them I think are just beautiful, uh, you know, just as, as they are. But uh, with that said, today's video is gonna be about uh, polishing this one up to a mirror finish. And I'll show you step-by-step step, uh, how I go through that process. So let's head over to the bench and uh, we'll start that up. All right, here's the three candidates here that I pulled out of the box uh, this morning. And uh, all three uh, double bit axes here in various sizes. And uh, when I started looking at these, like this one, this has a nice patina on it. And I don't know, I just really like the look of this one. And I think I might just preserve how this one looks, sharpen it up and hang it on a handle just as it is. And uh, this is the one here that I'm gonna, I'm gonna polish up today. Uh, no name on, on this guy here. I don't see any uh, maker's mark or anything like that. So, uh, and this one's not too bad, not too pitted. Uh, it looks like this one will, will polish up real nice. And then uh, here's a, a True Temper Red Warrior here. And uh, this one, I think I just might uh, uh, not polish to a mirror finish, but just take off some of this uh, rust take some of these uh, nicks and dings out of it, the, that type of thing. And uh, this type of ax here, I like to preserve uh, the logo and all that on here. Not go to a, a mirror or shine on this one, but just uh, clean it up real nice and hang it. So there's the three I pulled out today, but uh, I'm gonna go over and get to work on this one right now. All right, here is the setup that I got going on the bench here. And this is a little jig that I made for uh, polishing axes, sharpening axes, that type of thing. And it's just a nice little clamping mechanism uh, to hold the ax while you're working on it. And it's just a little jig that I got clamped in here to my uh, bench vise onto the table here and got a little uh, a bench dog over here on the side that that's pushed up against. And so what I got going on 
is I just got a an old hinge here that I have, right? Mount it to a to a board, and then I put down some uh, foam that's glued down to this jig here, and uh, I welded a piece of metal in there, and then wrapped this with some rubber tape type of thing, and this is just so you can slide the axe over top of this jig right here, and then uh, just come in with a spring clamp under the side. And that just holds it down real nice, and you can uh, work on that, grind on it, file, polish, sharpen, do the whole nine yards there. And then <clears throat> over on this side of the jig, you can put the uh, ax up right there, and you can work on the bottom. You can work on the top. All this is is a tang sticking up here of metal. And uh, same thing, wrapped in uh, some rubber tape. It's just some rubber tape for uh, electrical work type of thing. And uh, same thing, you can you know polish this all up, uh, work on the top and on the bottom of it over there. All right, as far as polishing up these axes goes, it's a several step process. And where I like to start out with this is, uh, depending on how rough the finish is, uh, you know, you pick a grit there. So this one isn't too bad. Uh, I'm gonna start out with 80 grit. You know, if it was a lot more pitted, I might go down to a, a 40 or 60 or that type of thing. But I think in this uh, case right here, uh, with these flapper discs, you know, these are these uh, sanding wheels here. You know, I'm just using a Makita angle grinder here. And so I got the flap disc here, and I'm starting with 80, and then I'm going to work to 120, and then I got flapper wheels in uh, 320 grit. And then from there, I'm going to move up to uh, uh, 500, 800, and then uh, then we'll take this action over to the buffing wheel and work through some different compounds. But to start off here, I'm gonna uh, start off with the 80. And uh, some little uh, tips here is that you wanna, you wanna keep this nice and cool. You don't wanna get this ax head overheated or that type of thing. You don't wanna take the temper out of it. And it's uh, very tempting to, you know, you wanna keep going, keep grinding away. You're making a lot of progress, but it's very important that you stop and you stop often and quench it in some water. And you wanna quench it in that water before it gets too hot at all. You don't wanna uh, temper it by putting it into the water. You know, you wanna, you wanna be constantly, you know, grind a little bit, put it in, grind a little bit, put it in. Sometimes it's nice to do multiple axes at the same time uh, if you're polishing them up. And you can uh, grind on one, set it aside, and just start rotating through a few of them is uh, also a nice way of doing it. So uh, last thing you want to do is start getting this thing, uh, you know, blue hot or anything like that. Uh, so uh, some keys to that is uh, just working quickly, working with the right grit. Uh, you know, if you don't have an aggressive enough grit and you go too high, uh, you can start uh, heating the thing up and you're not taking off, uh, you know, a lot of metal type of thing and the heat starts building up real quick. So it's better to go with a coarser grit at first and then uh, work your way up. So as far as uh, grinding goes on this with the flapper disc, uh, what I like to do is I like to work in this direction right here, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And what I'm doing by working it that way is I'm putting a, I'm working kind of with the grain of the ax and I'm running all my sanding marks. I want to run in one direction on this, right? And uh, sometimes, occasionally, I'll do like a crosshatch thing. I'll go one direction and then I'll work the other way. And sometimes you can see, you know, uh, if you're getting out all the scratches that are going one direction and going the other type of thing. But uh, for the most part, I like to keep all um, 
the removal of the material, uh, the lines of that, that get put in by the sandpaper here, all in one direction. And so then when you work over to the buffing wheel too, the buffing wheel is spinning like this and it's also putting lines in one direction. So you're not trying to get out, you know, lines that are going all over, you know, swirls and all that kind of stuff. And uh, as you get into it and you start polishing it up, uh, you know, you hold it up in the light, start looking at the scratches, that type of thing. So, you know, it's a kind of thing that, that takes some patience and some time and, you know, you got to get in there and wrestle with it, you know, and really pay attention and uh, look at look at uh, how you're sanding and the sanding marks. And uh, working with the 80 grit, uh, the first grit that you use on it, that's the most important step of the whole thing is you want to get out all the scratches, all the dings. You want to look at it real closely in the light, you know, with your lowest grit, because if you jump to a, a higher grit too soon, uh, you know, and he didn't get out all those dings, those higher grits are never going to get out those, uh, those big things. And you're going to have to uh, backtrack and, uh, go back, uh, to those lower grits. So the, f uh, most important step is, uh, the first grit that you use on it. Make sure you get the thing real smooth and, uh, check it in the light several times and, and just keep going over it until it just looks absolutely, uh, just nice. All right, so I'm going to start out now uh, with the 80 grit. Oh, another note here, when you're doing this stuff, it's nice to have, uh, put the mask on. You know, this generates a lot of dust, and uh, I know these are hard to come by nowadays, And uh, but this is uh, important to wear a mask. There's a lot of dust that comes off of this, and at the same time, I'm always wearing, uh, you know, got the hearing protection on. So, all right. So I'll start grinding with this 80 grit and you can kind of watch the pattern uh, that I use going over this. Now see, that's uh, nice to the touch. It's not getting too hot, you know, and that's great. And even now where that's, uh, you know, just barely getting warm, uh, I'll take this uh, and quench it in the water and just pull any little amount of heat right out of that. All right, slide that back on. All right, now this, just as I'm looking at it and I'm testing out the 80 there and it's got some deeper pitting uh, than I thought in it. And so I'm gonna switch down to a 60 grit paper there and then come back to the 80. Again, I don't want it to get uh, too hot by using too high of a grit type of thing. So I'm gonna jump down to the 60 and then come back to the 80. All right, this is a good time to just stop and look at the geometry of the axe head there. And specifically, looking at the tip at the bit of the axe here. And uh, here's just some little examples here that I got. Uh, as far as the point of the axe, you know, here's an example of it being too thin, uh, correct, and too thick. Uh, so if we look at the tip of the axe head, uh, the bevel that you want to put on there should be a slightly rounded bevel, right? As it comes out to the point. Shouldn't just be these straight cuts back on the sides. It should be rounded in. And 
there's all different schools of thought and different woods that you can chop when it comes to that angle and there's all kinds of different bevels and angles that you can grind on there on the axe and uh, it all comes down to personal preference or how the axe was made and what style of axe it is and uh, how you want to maintain that bevel and uh, here on the sheet it's showing some examples here of like a uh, a blunt axe is going to glance off when you're chopping where uh you know properly sharpened axe will dig in and will uh, cut the wood properly and so it's kind of a trial and error thing as far as uh, what style you like you put your own grind on there you go out and you cut some wood and you figure out what you like uh these uh true temper axes here like here's this true temper red warrior now this has a uh this has been properly set up uh where it was made and the thicknesses on it are are just great and if i i got these little gauges here made out of leather and if you look at uh this one uh this one comes out really nice as far as uh a nice proper grind on the axe this one that i'm working on today uh is a very thin grind on this axe here and even the smallest gauge I got here of a 17 degree yeah, there's still a little air in there so this turns out to be a very uh, thin blade axe that I'm working on this is uh, maybe more in the style of uh, like a Gransfurs Brooks some of those axes they have a nice uh, thin grind like this Boy, some of those uh, axes are so sharp uh, you could shave with them um, and then another thing to think about is a lot of double bit axes are ground with uh, one side is real sharp and you're going to do all your chopping on your trees and that kind of thing. And then typically the other side is ground to a uh, blunter point and that's used for uh, chopping at roots or chopping at branches that are uh, close to the ground, that type of thing where, you know, you might hit a rock or that type of thing and, and dull the blade uh so typically a lot of double bit axes were ground with you know one really sharp edge and the other one just uh kept blunt so you have a a dual purpose tool now these gauges here these are real handy to have when you're uh sharpening an axe and grinding it and you can uh you can find these you can probably find the some templates online that type of thing this particular one here is out of a book called an axe to grind and that's a, a great resource to have on on axes uh, that was a guy uh from the forest service uh who put together a book on just uh axe maintenance and use and and that type of thing and it's a, a great resource and this picture here is is out of that book there and uh, just showing this bevel and you might even be able to just uh, print this off and and cut that out and use that as a gauge but uh yeah great tool to have there and i i think you can even buy axe gauges uh probably online i i think they uh have little cutouts uh that you can buy that have uh maybe like a little wheel and all around the edge is different angles uh you know of blade grinds and that type of thing all right another thing to think about at this stage in the game here is the shape of the tip of the axe here and so uh depending on uh what axe you got here uh you could have an axe like this where there's some big chips out of it and here's uh something that you'd have to reprofile and you'd have to grind this back and put a, a new edge on it and that you can come in you know with the grinder here you know and grind that edge grind this edge down like this type of thing and get a nice uh shape on it or you could do it on a on a grinding wheel or um, you know multiple ways to get that done but right exactly now is a good time to take a look at the edge and if you have to do that you know you can grind this to a a nice um arc there and then start uh, then reshaping it and sharpening it and bringing it back to a, a nice bevel. Uh, this particular axe uh, seems like it's in pretty good shape. I like the lines on each side. And uh, this one, 
as I keep polishing it and going with finer and finer grits, this is going to just naturally just sharpen up really sharp. And um, so uh, if I was to do, you know, an axe like this where I'm going to keep it rustic, I'd do a, a little bit different method of uh, sharpening, it, sharpening it. But as far as um, this axe right here, it will almost uh, just sharpen itself as I'm just polishing and polishing and uh, getting this ax to a nice point. All right, here, I've just uh, finished up on both sides here with the 60 grit on the flapper wheel there. And I've just about gotten out all the little specks and little tiny uh, spots on there. And all I'm seeing now is just the scratch marks from the sanding there. So that, like I said before, I feel is one of the most important steps in the whole operation. It's just making sure uh, with the 60 grit or with your lowest grit that you've got all the scratches, all the little dings and dents and that kind of thing out with that lowest grade paper and just keep going uh, over and over, uh, you know, looking at it in the light and then making sure, you know, because if you start heading to those uh, higher grits, um, you're not going to get those out. Now's the time to get any of those dings out. All right, for this part of the operation here, I got this little tang sticking up and I just slide this right over that little tang. And then I like to come in with the spring clamp. And all I got here is a piece of uh, angle iron here attached to the back of the jig. And you can just come in and just clip that right up. And uh, that gets that nice and solid. So you can do uh, some grinding on the top and the bottom. All right, now that I got this uh, all done up here with the 60 grit, um, so every surface has been done, I've checked it over in the light and to make sure that there's uh, no little spots that I wanna get out and uh, everything looks real uniform. Now I'm gonna shift over and start climbing the ladder in uh, all the different grits. So I'm gonna work my way up, uh, go 80 grit, 120, 320, 500 and then go up to 800 before I go over to the to the buffing wheel and start going for the polish so uh, And just a note there on these uh, Flapper wheels and the different grits and that kind of thing if it seems like the grits wearing out at all You know, I'm just saying if you attempt to do any of this uh, yourself uh, as soon as you get the slightest notion that that grits not cutting anymore uh, just immediately switch out to a, a new wheel, a new grit, and uh, you know, you're not gonna do uh, like these first passes with the 60 there. You're not gonna just do it with one wheel. You know, I had to use uh, two wheels over the course of that. But make sure you got plenty on hand because if you're starting to use a, a flapper disc or some abrasive that's all worn out, you're just gonna really start heating, uh, heating up this metal. You're gonna start taking the temper out of it. 
and uh, it's just gonna render it no good type of thing. So you make sure you wanna keep this cool. So now the whole time I was doing that uh, 60 grit, this thing never got hotter than, uh, you know, where I could, I could always touch it with my hand. It never got that hot, you know, where the thing is, uh, you know, you go to grab it and you're like, oh my God, that, that's way too hot. You know, uh, you want to keep this thing nice and cool uh, the whole way. Uh, just take your time, patience, and, uh, and exactly keep changing those grits out. You know, uh, a dull grit on there, boy, it just starts heating up, uh, heating up the metal really fast. All right, so now I'm going to uh, go to all those grits, and uh, I'll probably put a lot of this in fast forward here for the video as I climb through all those, and I'll try to keep giving you close-ups here of uh, what the axe looks like after uh, each grit. All right, 
like this is with the 500 grit. And when you get to this stage and get to this grit here, uh, you gotta start getting down at all different angles and getting the light hitting it at different angles and start really looking at the scratches. This is a pretty important step right here, especially with this uh, 500 grit. Uh, it's hard to see on the camera, but there's some slight lines right in here. I gotta keep working that area right there. And let me see if I can get any of these to come up. It's kind of hard to see in the camera there. Oh yeah, yeah, see, you can see right there. See those lines right through here? Exactly, you catch that in the right light. And then uh, just keep going after that. All right, now I've shifted over here to the uh, buffing central here, the buffing station. And uh, right, I just went through uh, all the grits on the sander there and I got this uh, looking really good with uh, the 800 there. And you can see even just with the, the 800, it's starting to get kind of a mirror polish going on there. And, uh, but there's still little, little marks in here from the, uh, from the sandpaper and that type of thing. So the next step now is to uh, put this onto the to the buffing wheel and work some different uh, compounds. And the system I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna use three different compounds here. And the first one I'm gonna use is emery, which is a nice heavy cutting compound. And then I'm gonna go to the SCR, which is uh, usually a uh, middle cutting there, usually used for uh, polishing stainless. And then I'm gonna go with the green uh, compound for the, for the finish. And uh, all those compounds, they all go onto different wheels. So at first, uh, this wheel that I got set up here on the uh, buffing machine here, uh, this is a Cecil wheel, and this has got uh, some heavy-duty Cecil in there, and that's uh, nice heavy cutting. And so I'll use the, the emery on this wheel. And then I got a, uh, a tight-stitched wheel over here, and this is also going to be uh, emery. And then what I'll do is I'll switch out to the uh, SCR wheel here and uh, go with the SCR. And then uh, for the final pass, I'll go here with the green wheel uh, for the green compound. So uh, just for, uh, some notes here on using these wheels. Uh, it's nice to have a like a rake type tool here. And this is to pull the compound out of the wheel because uh, what the compound is, it's a grit and it's mixed with a type of a wax type of thing to hold the compound, hold the grit into the compound. And it gets built up on the wheel here and metal gets built up on the wheel. And so you want to come in every so often, tap it with this and uh, get that buildup of compound off. And uh, kind of a misnomer that you want to use a lot of compound and uh, it's, you want to use very little. So uh, like when I'm using it on this wheel, I just come up, barely tap this on here for a few seconds and that's it. You don't want to load it all up. When you start loading it up and you start uh, seeing uh, when you're you're buffing here on, on these pieces and uh, you're starting to get wax loaded up on here, you got uh, too much compound on there. It's better to just tap it on there uh, every so often and then uh, buff with it instead of uh, trying to load it up. So I'll, I'll give you a little uh, run through here and uh, show you how to, you know, how I, I like to buff this out. So I'll turn this on, right? Just give this a little tap, that's it, right? And then you wanna have a nice firm grip on the piece 
and always that the the wheel is cutting down here and uh, yeah just start I like to work it back and forth tap of the emery right flip the axe over always with this point in the way you never want to get this to where this hooks into the axe this can take the tool and just uh, fly it across the shop type of thing so got to be paying attention out with the rake. And then tap it here with a little bit of the end ring. Just a little bit there. And then start working this. This is just starting to look uh, absolutely beautiful here. And this is just cutting it with the heaviest cutting compound with the emery. And it's uh, already polishing up to a nice mirror finish there. So in between uh, buffing compounds, I'm gonna switch it up now to the uh, SCR, to the stainless uh, compound there. But uh, what I like to do is, is in between there, is just to get a little rag and wipe off any old compound that's on there from the uh, emery. Uh, just wet down a, a cloth with a little acetone there and just give it a, a good wipe down, clean off any, any wax residue from that old compound because you don't want that to be uh, getting into the wheel, leaving any scratches there from the emery. Want all that to go away. And just another note here, uh, while you are polishing this on the, on the wheels here with a different compound, 
that's getting this thing razor sharp. And uh, buffing wheels, if you didn't know it, is, is a great way to sharpen a knife or that type of thing. And boy, you can get things really sharp with a buffing wheel. You know, it's just like putting uh, green compound on a leather strop type of thing when you're uh, sharpening a knife for the final step. And a uh, similar thing here, just using the, the buffing wheel, you can get some things uh, pretty sharp. All right, so I got that all cleaned off. Oh yeah, another note, uh, it's a good time now to start laying this down on a nice piece of cloth. You don't wanna lay it down on the bench where there's other grit laying around because that will start scratching the surface. So it's good to put down a, a nice soft cloth. And then now I'll shift over here and I got the SCR wheel set up here. All right, I just finished up with the green compound there and that's looking really nice. I'm really happy with uh, how this uh, came out and uh, yeah, it's just looking great. So the next step here is to uh, put a little protective coating on there so that doesn't flash rust or that type of thing. So uh, I like to uh, uh, clean it down with some acetone, which I just did. And then I'm gonna come back now here with uh, some frog lube. And this is kind of a paste here that uh, is a, puts a protective coating on there. And this stuff is just great to put on your tools or a milling machine or vices, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it just keeps it from rusting and puts a, a nice little coat, almost like uh, putting wax on there. So I'll put a little coat of this over the top. And it smells really good too. I don't know. It smells like mint or something. So this is nice just to, uh, I think I got, uh, heard of this frog lube stuff from Tom Lipton. And, uh, if you haven't checked out his videos, he's got a great, uh, He's got great machining videos, Ox Tools, Tom Lipton, and uh, I found out about this product uh, through one of his uh, videos that he did. And I think he was putting this on his uh, vise and maybe on the top of his milling machine type of thing. And uh, so I picked up some of this and it's it's been a great product. Been using it for, for quite a while now. All right, so the frog lube, I like to put it on there and then I let this sit for like five minutes and then come back and wipe it all down. All right, it's been five minutes there and then now just uh, give this a nice little polish here, a little shine. All right, there's our uh, polished up X there and uh, yeah, it's looking looking pretty sweet. I'm really happy with how that turned out. And uh, all right, so now the next step uh, is to 
put a handle on this. So I got some hickory, uh, some pieces uh, cut up, ready to roll, and I'll start shaping those. And I'm gonna do that in the next video, so stay tuned uh, for part two of this. So part two will be uh, uh, making the handle, cutting it out, putting it on, uh, putting the head on the handle there. And then uh, I'll also have a part three where I'll be making a nice leather sheath for this. Uh, so stay tuned, lots to come on this uh, little three-part series. And uh, I hope you guys like the video. And uh, if you could, uh, uh, give a, a like on there and subscribe. And, um, and leave a comment. Tell me what you're thinking about the axe and uh, if you like the content. So uh, I hope all you guys are doing great and uh, I'll see you soon. Okay.